So, you know, kind of where I left off was, you know, kind of at the beginning of 1-4. And to tell you the truth, there's not a lot of new things to teach you here. Uh, but, but there's a couple thoughts I never, I never finished. Uh, <clears throat> but let's start with this question. What happened in 1-4 was we started to get these questions. Find the equation of the line. Um, so I like these questions. Find the equation of the line. And then I, I might, there's a lot of ways to ask you, but let's just start with this one. That goes through these two points. That goes through, uh, you know, 5, negative 8, and uh, <clears throat> uh, 3, 7. So, so that's a good question. Um, sort of, like I said, sort of toward the end of this chapter. Uh, can you guys do it? What would you do first? Find the slope. She's right. You use that little slope formula and find the slope. So step one is you find the slope. Ultimately, the question wants the equation. So that's where we're going. But first, we need the slope. And the slope is that formula where you subtract your y's. I'm going to go 7 minus negative 8. That's me subtracting my y's. And then I'm going to go 3 minus 5. I guess I'm going to get a 15 over negative 2. And, you know, I don't mind making that a decimal. Again, when you're doing the My Math Lab homework, they'll say sometimes they want a fraction or they want a decimal. If you're doing a multiple choice thing, you maybe they have the answer written as a fraction or maybe they have it written as a decimal because it's a nice decimal. It's either, anyway, it's either 7.5 or negative 15 halves. Either way. But now that you have the slope, and that was easy and quick. You guys okay with that? Now that you have the slope, uh, you can get the equation. My advice last week was this formula. Y minus Y1 equals the slope times X minus X1. That's this, this point slope formula, and that's good for getting the equation. When someone says find the equation, I feel like that's my friend. That's my, my buddy. But what do I need? I need a slope and a point. If I have a slope and a point, I'm good to go, and I have a slope and a point. I do now. I've got a couple of points, to tell you the truth. Either point works. I'll just use this point and this slope, and here we go. Y minus 7 equals that slope, neg uh, negative 7.5, times X minus 3. I'm going to go with the decimal and just distribute and use my calculator or whatever I need to do here. Uh, that's a negative 7.5X plus something, 22.5 maybe. Right, and then I'm gonna add the seven, I'm gonna add the seven, so y equals negative 7.5x plus 29.5. I'm happy with that. You know, if you had your choice, I don't know, I'd do that. I'd just go with this. This is a nice decimal, no reason to, I don't know, that's good. Uh, but again, you're, when you're fighting the My Math Lab homework, you're, you're right. Maybe they don't use decimal. Maybe they want you to use fractions. Um, let me try this with fractions. <clears throat> well, let me just say, with fractions, uh, what is this number in fractions? It's seven and a half. It's 15 halves. It's negative 15 halves. That's, that's what it is. And this is funny. It's 29 and a half. What the heck is 29 and a half as a fraction? 59 halves. How did I do that? You know how I did that? <laughs> I thought of it as 29 and a half, yeah. and I changed it to an improper, I multiplied, uh, that's 58, 59 halves, yeah, yeah, anyway. They're both correct. Right. Uh, <clears throat> okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> um, there's other ways of doing this question, and, and one of the things I didn't get to last week, I'll get to it real quick now. Um, <clears throat> watch this. <clears throat> I'd like you to, let's, I wanna, let's do this. I wanna quickly graph this line. 
Uh, I'd also like to quickly graph this line. I'd also like to quickly graph this line. Now let's just check these things out. Are you ready? This is quick graphing now. Quick graphing. Uh, starting at the top, uh, how would, what would you give me? I would say the y-intercept is three. I would start there at the y-intercept. That's how I quickly graph things. And then the slope is two. So I'd go up two and over one. And I'd go up two and over one. And in a way, there it is. That's how you can quickly graph a line, y-intercept and slope. We thought that should be easy. Uh, hey, this middle one, what about this middle one? The y-intercept is zero, so it goes through zero. But it still has a slope of up two and over one. So when you draw it, here it is. And something should look interesting to you. Let's look at the next one. The y-intercept is negative five. I'm just doing quick graphing just because I'm going to make a point. Of course, what's the slope on this one? Up two. Up two over one. If I do a pretty decent job of accuracy here, which I'm not, I kind of am, uh, I should see something. What do you see? Okay. Parallel lines. They are parallel lines. They are parallel lines. And why are they parallel? What did you say? Well, right. Why, what about them makes them parallel? Look at their equations. What about them makes them parallel? They all got the same slope. Maybe you knew that idea. Maybe this is the first time you saw that idea. It's a very common sense idea. If, you, if, if everything's rising and running the same amount, aren't they gonna be parallel? I mean, it totally makes sense, especially after you graph three lines. Uh, rising and running the same amount, they're parallel lines. And so here's a, so this, Fatch could have been stated last week if I would have a little more time, but here it is, it's easy. Parallel lines have the same slope. That's just a true fact. And I think it's very common sense. <clears throat> but we might need it for some, some interesting questions. Parallel lines have the same slope. <clears throat> While we're talking about this though, uh, <clears throat> What about perpendicular lines? And, and, and do you know what perpendicular lines even mean? Do you know what perpendicular lines mean? Perpendicular lines mean they meet at a right angle. That's what it means to be perpendicular. They meet at a right angle or a 90 degree angle, like, uh, like the corner of this room is a right angle. You know, the corner of this blackboard is a right angle here. Uh, right, you know what a right angle is, the desk. Right, a 90 degree angle. So if two lines can meet at a 90 degree angle, they're, they're perpendicular. And how can you tell about their slopes? Uh, I'll tell you, maybe you remember, but perpendicular lines have slopes that are, I'm gonna write this sentence, perpendicular lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals of each other. Negative reciprocals of each other. Yeah, that's worth putting in a box, I guess. <laughs> the book probably told me that. But that's a concept we need. <clears throat> that's a concept we need. Ah. Uh, what do we mean, negative reciprocals of each other? All these lines had a slope of two. This was a slope of two, this was a slope of two, this was a slope of two. Same slope, they're parallel lines, very obvious. This is not as obvious here, but, but you know, if, if one line is going up three and over four, or hang on, up four and over three, maybe that's what, then the other line is going down three and over four. Yeah, anyway, it's not that obvious, <laughs> but it is true. Please sort of memorize it as a fact. It's a little harder to just say, oh yeah, that's obvious. I don't think it's that obvious, <clears throat> but it is a fact. So let's memorize it. And so what am I saying? I'm saying if one of the slopes is four thirds, the perpendicular slope is 
the negative reciprocal. The reciprocal means flip it over, and the negative means negate it. If one of the slopes is one-fifth, what's his perpendicular slope? What do you say? Good. The reciprocal would be five over one, or five, and negated would be negative five. Yeah. Yeah. If you find lines with these kind of slopes, they're guaranteed to be perpendicular lines. Right. <clears throat> Now, in a way, that's, that's almost the last big concept I didn't get to at one point for it. I think the other thing we need to do, though, maybe today a little bit and, 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 and Thursday, is keep practicing those word problems. There's a lot of good word problems in 1, 3, and 1, 4. Uh, <clears throat> and I like the word problems. Let's, let's do, but now that we know these concepts, look, where do that, how does it show up in a problem? Look, I'll show you. It shows up in a problem like this. Watch. <clears throat> It usually shows up in a problem like this. Find the equation of the line that goes through um, a point, you know, uh, 6, 2, and is parallel to, look what it says here. It's also going to, this line, I'm looking for an equation of the line. It goes through this point, and it's parallel to this line. 3x minus 2y equals 8. So I'm looking for an equation of a line that goes through this point and it's parallel to this. I feel like when someone says find the equation of a line, uh, you know, I feel like this is my buddy right here. I, 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 my, my point slope formula works real well for me. <clears throat> but what I need to use this formula is I need a slope which I don't feel like I got, but I do have a point. They gave me a point. I'm happy about that. I can plug in the point. I wish I knew this slope. I wonder what the slope of my line is. Well, I'm thinking with you here. You're thinking with me, I hope. But anyway, if it's parallel to this line, then uh, I guess I wish I knew what his slope was. And then it would be the, the same slope, of course. Hey, what is his slope? No. So to see his slope, I mean, that's the, and now uh, I think I would put him into y equals mx plus b form. That's how I usually can tell somebody's slope. If they're in that form, then the slope is that number. He's not really in that form, so can you put him in that form? I think if you put him in that form, you'll see his slope. That's my suggestion. Maybe you knew that already, but maybe you weren't sure what to do. You need his slope. And if you just move them around, like, you know, what do I mean by put them in that form? Uh, what? Subtract 3x from both sides. Right, solve for y, get y by itself. So he says subtract 3x, let me do that. If I subtract the 3x, okay, I'm getting there, now what? Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, y equals, that's a positive 3 halves x minus 4. So here's the same line. This is this line. These are the same line. Uh, but he was, this is sort of in standard form, which kind of, I don't know, I like this form. If I want to know his slope, I like this form. Right. 